Hi, this is Travis from Tenno Farms, and what I'm going to show you today is my switch went bad on my air compressor. So this is a, a Central Pneumatic, it's Harbor Freight brand. So not an expensive compressor, but still I'd rather not have to get rid of if the motor's still good. This is the switch here. I don't know if it'll focus on that or not, but this switch here quit working on me. I was using it the other day, and I started it up. Uh, opened up the valve just to make sure everything was drained out, flipped the switch off to close the valve, and when I flipped it back on it was just dead. So I kind of knew the motor wasn't bad, so it had to be something internally. I took it apart, got out my uh, multimeter, and just kind of tested the circuits, and saw that the, the problem was the switch. So I took the information off the switch, got a new one. It's not exactly the same, but made by the same company, got all the same specs. Just got it from Amazon, from this company called HQRP. It was like 10 bucks, so not bad. So hopefully I can fix a $150 compressor for only $10 here. So we'll see how it goes. I'm gonna show you how to put this switch in. If I thought about it, I would have recorded it when I was taking it apart and testing it too, but I just didn't really think about it at that time. So, so unfortunately, you just get to see me put it back together. Uh, so here, I just gotta take the screws back out of the compressor and get it apart. And you can see here where I've got the switch out of it already. So it's only six screws that hold the cap here on the top of the compressor. So just gotta get them all loose and this handle comes off too with it. But I've liked this compressor. It's been pretty good. I keep it in the garage just for the cars so that way I don't have to take them out to the barn to use the big compressor. It's just nice and convenient. But when I took this apart, that was the first time I've ever actually worked on a compressor before. But it was a pretty simple setup. Just has the switch, this breaker reset here, and then the motor in there. And then it also has a, a pressure switch for the tool to turn the motor off when the tank gets to a certain pressure. So what I did was I just started, plugged it into the wall, did a voltage check along various places until I found where the voltage stopped. And that's how I found that it was the switch. And then just to be sure the motor was still good, I went ahead and jumped the power directly to the motor and it still runs. So I know the motor is good and I knew it wasn't getting power past the switch. So if you ever have to take one apart, that's how to test it yourself. It seems that they use the same switch in just about everything. I think the Craftsman, the Harbor Freight, I can't even think of the other brands right now, but, but every one that I looked up seems to be the same switch. It's going to be a little hard for you to see, but I unhooked it, left it unhooked before, so that way I kind of remember how to put it back together. And it's a two pole switch, Let's see here, at 125 volts, 16 amps. So, so that's what kind of switch it is. And what I did here is I took a picture of the way it was wired before so that way I could remember exactly how it goes back together. So it's always a good idea to either take pictures or draw diagrams before you take stuff apart so that way you can get it back exactly together unless you're really used to doing it you just remember where everything goes. So the switch just goes in from the top here. Make sure I put it in the right direction. Yep, this is the right way. So off 
nothing on. And then it just snaps in there like that. If you can see it, hopefully. And then from the other side, we just have to put the wiring back in the way it goes. So the wire from the breaker here goes to the one closest to it on this pole. I hope you can see it. The lighting is just not great, the angle is not great, but it's the one closest here. And then just put the little silicone boot back over it. Help keep the voltage from arcing onto anything else in here. Kind of tight quarters in there. having some issues with that. Maybe I can slide it back on before I put it in there. See if I can do this without pulling the wire apart and making a mess. I might have to get pliers to slide it over. My fingers haven't been cooperating with me lately. I kind of pinched something in my neck or shoulder. They're just acting funny on me. I'm starting to get it there. There we go. Now it's sliding on there. Sure these are still tight. There we go. Pop it on there. And then the one that goes to the pressure switch here, well actually the circuit board, we'll put that one on the other side. I'm going to go ahead and slide this back on there too on this one, since I know from the first one this worked better. There we go. That one went right on there. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. It's all wired back together now. Um, you can kind of see how the circuit board is set up here. You got the motor, it's got a little fan on it here to help cool it. And then it goes down into the compressor to push the air into the tank. Then you've got your tank pressure and your tool pressure here. So there you go. I'm going to go ahead and put it back together and then we'll test it here and make sure it works. started here. I don't think I flipped it all the way over so the screws are probably still in the screw holes on the back side too. Make sure. Yep, I don't see me hanging out back there so they're probably still in the holes. started here first before I tighten any of them all the way down. I'll be glad to have this back. Way easier than driving the cars out to the barn to put air in the tires. It's one of the things, if you got a barn, you can do all kinds of nice things out there, but when it's a little ways away from the house, 
and you have little jobs that you just want to do quickly, it kind of gets inconvenient. So then you end up having two of everything. So I've got this little air compressor here. I've got another battery charger here at the house. I've got two sets of tools. So there's always that, but it's definitely a time saver when you don't need to do a big job. And hopefully the new switch works. I didn't even think to actually do a continuity test on it to turn it on and make sure it's uh, good. I'm just kind of assuming since it's brand new it should be good. Alright. All back together. Plug it in make sure it works. The, uh, the label that's attached to the cord in here and screwed it down on top of it. There we go. Well, I really got that tangled up there. It never goes quite as smooth on camera as it does off camera. Hopefully this will reach the outlet so that I can show you on camera. Yep, there we go. So let's see. There's the moment. Is it going to work? There we go. All fixed. Thanks for watching.